My guest today is Kevin Kelly, president of the Cleveland City Council, and he is one of the leaders of uh, issue number seven, the proponent of issue number seven, which is going to be a countywide vote that, that, that uh, Cuyahoga County voters get to vote on. Yes, Leon, thank you for having me. What would, it, 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 we call it the sin tax. Yes. What would issue seven do, and why are you favoring it? Okay. What issue seven would do is it would extend the pennies per drink and four cents per pack of cigarettes tax that has been in place for the past 25 years. Uh, and it would extend that for another 20 years. Um, I'm in favor of it because this very small tax um, has yielded a tremendous amount of benefit for the community. Uh, we, there was a time in our community where you know, had things gone a little bit different, we may have no professional sports teams. Mm -hmm. The Indians were um, playing in the old municipal stadium. There were, there were cities that were building stadiums for the sake of drawing a professional sports team. The Cavs were playing in Summit County. There was one lane in, one lane out, um, and no real development around that. N no economic benefit for Cleveland or Cuyahoga. And we all know what happened with the Browns. They had more than one foot out the door. They, they had two feet out the door. But in 1990, and then again in 1995, we as a community voted um, that we wanted to tax ourselves in this manner for the for the express purpose of keeping professional sports in Cleveland. And that decision has yielded great benefits for the community. Um, Five billion dollars in economic activity. Um, hundreds of millions of local taxes returned to, to local government. Um, thousands and thousands of jobs. And But the real issue of why people should vote for Issue 7 is that because we made those decisions in 1990 and 1995, we, the public, own these facilities, not the teams, not anybody else. We, the public, we own them, and we have an obligation to maintain them. We have an obligation to maintain them in a way that is going to, that, that respects our lease and also keeps them in the, the kind, of, kind of condition that we want professional sports, uh, professional teams to play in. Mm -hmm. We have to keep in major league yeah. shape. You've heard the opposition. The opposition has said they think that, that, that the, uh, the, the, the football, basketball, and, and the baseball owners ought to put more into the stadium mm -hmm. that, that the city owns, that the city has done enough and the county has done enough. Right. And that, that ignores a lot of what the, what the teams have done. Um, as, as you likely know, in 2004, Gateway was essentially insolvent. So that the teams came to the table and renegotiated the lease in such a way that's more publicly friendly. Uh, the teams have put in all of the capital and, and maintenance into the Q and progressive field uh, to date. The public has not put any money into, into capital r repairs that are necessary. Uh, with the Brown Stadium, uh, the Browns are investing um, $90 million in the, in the project that they're doing right now. So it's, it's kind of a misnomer to say that the, that the, that the owner should pay this. But it really kind of gets to kind of the, the, the fundamental flaw with all of the opposition's argument is they try to, they try to suggest to people or else they outwardly state it that, that this is a benefit for the owners. It is not a benefit for the owners. We are the owners. Well, to the extent that we're the owners, it's a benefit to us. But the owners of these facilities are us, and any benefit of Issue 7 is going to go to the public. This is a public benefit, and it's going to maintain our publicly owned facilities, our public investments. In our final two minutes, let me ask you, uh, uh, exactly what would, what would be the, the, the price on this? I mean, mm -hmm. if, if this is the syntax yes. on, on tobacco yes. and on, on alcohol mm -hmm. and j just on those things. Yes. It would be a continuation of the very minimal tax, um, one penny per beer, one and a half, excuse me, one and a half cents per beer, one penny per glass of wine, and four and a half cents for a pack of cigarettes. Uh, it is a very small tax. It's not a new tax. It's not an increase. And I would even suggest that most people don't even think about this tax. I, most people don't even remember that they are paying this very small tax that we've been paying for 25 years. Um, and it would just continue that. And I also suggest that it's, I, I believe it's unlikely that if issue seven were to fail, that that your beer is going to go from four dollars to three ninety nine. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think that the that this is that the consumer is going to benefit from this failing. I think the only benefit to the community and to the consumers is that this pass, and we continue to make the investments that that we as a public are obligated to do in a way that shows that our three partners and the teams that we're a partner with them. In our final 20 seconds, yes. you see this as a fair tax, a fair to way do, to do business. Yes, I do, Leon. And the reason I think it's fair is that um, each day um, taxes are imposed upon me. 
um, by, for example, it's Columbus, by people I have very little in common with, um, but it's a democratic system. The reason this is fair is because the fairest tax is one that you vote on, and this is a tax that we as a community voted on twice, and we're asking the public to vote on this twice, just like a school levy or anything else. We're imposing this upon ourselves. For that reason, I think it's the fairest of taxes. Kevin Kelly, Council President in the City of Cleveland, who was in favor of issue number seven on the ballot.